Hi, this is Sherry Patton Ceramics, and today we are making a ring bowl. You're going to start with about 10 ounces of clay if you would like. Uh, if you don't want to weigh that, this is 3 inches by 2 inches wide and 1 and a quarter inch tall. You're going to take that and you're going to cut it into three pieces. I'm just going to eyeball it here. Mm, looks like it should go over a bit right there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just want to make sure that you have enough for the whole project. My students are a little low on clay right now. All right. Got your three pieces. This one is going to be for the base. This one is going to be for the coils up the side. And this one is going to be for all the rest. And now we're going to make a sphere. Just a rough sphere. Just rolling it in our palms. And then you're going to flatten it. I'm standing right now as I flatten it. Makes it a lot easier to flatten the clay by putting your weight into it. Notice I'm flipping it and flipping it and flipping it over and over again. That really, really helps because it makes it so that it doesn't stick to this paper. A lot of my students just have paper at home to roll out their things. Cardboard is better. So once you get it out to Oh, bigger than your palm. Then you want to roll it. You get a roller like this, and you would just roll this way, and the clay lengthens. So then you want to flip it and make it so it's wide. Because when you do that, the next time that you roll it, it's going to get longer this way again. And this is about right. If you don't have a ruler, what you need to do is get a shoe. <laughs> Actually, it could be a shoe that you're wearing. And what you would do is you would take the shoe, you would take another piece of paper, don't do this without a piece of paper between, and then you would take the magazine and you would put the magazine over it. The reason that you do this is because if you put just the magazine, the clay will stick. You really don't want that to happen. You won't be able to get it off. And then you're going to step on it with the first part right here, the toe box. Step, 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 and flatten it that way. Now we're going to cut off a perfect circle. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take Anything that you have that is round in your house. <laughs> this seems to be a, a nice size for me here. The diced tomatoes. This one is uh, a pound and 12 ounces, uh, which is 28 ounces. So I'm just going to lay it right on top there. I'm going to get my uh, paper clip. That's what my students use because they're at home. <laughs> and I'm just going to cut right around there for the base. And take this off, see if it will come off. There we go. And I'm going to put my extra clay to the side so I can use it. And now I'm going to look at this and see which side I like the best. This side right here has a little divot in it. So that's the side I'm going to use to put all my things on top because it looks really, really nice if you have a nice clean bottom. And so this will be my nice clean bottom so I can put my name on here if I would like. And now we're going to go ahead and do the coils, the two main coils up the side. So we're gonna take that second third and we're going to cut it in half. Now I don't wanna make this a long video. So I'm gonna put this one away because I already rolled one of the two coils. So now I'll just have to, to roll one more with you guys. So here we go. I start off with my palm. Line this up. And what I need to do is make sure that this is going to be long enough to go all the way around that base right there. I'm going to take these 
things off here. Kind of get in my way. See, that's the problem with paper is that it moves. You can try rolling it on a on some other surface and it might be better for you. Definitely if you're going to do that, don't put any water on your clay while you're trying to roll it because it will just totally stick to uh, slick surfaces. So let's see, I think I'm getting pretty close. Let's see here, let's see. Yeah, oh, more than enough, great, perfect. I'm gonna put this aside. And score. With the air dry clay, it's uh, always good to put a little bit of water because it reduces the friction and it makes it a lot easier to score fast. With regular clay, I usually don't. And uh, I always tell my students X's and pluses, which means you really want to mar up that surface Okay, now we're going to look and see which is the ugly side. I'm going to score that side. Oh, actually, can I think about it? This is the one that I actually pre-cut is the bottom one because you have to score it on both sides, and I didn't want you guys to have to wait for me. So just putting a little bit of water on here because I have to score and add water. And now I'm just putting that around with the score marks facing up and downwards where it's connecting. I am overlapping. Now, I'm making sure that this is a perfect circle as I'm going around because really, this is going to matter as I go. So the way that I do that is I turn it and then adjust it. Turn it and adjust it. That looks quite good. And then I'm going to take a paper clip and I'm going to cut it at an angle. And the reason that I'm cutting it at an angle is because that is going to make it connect better because it's going to have more uh, place, more of a place to connect. Taking off that extra clay there. Oops, I didn't cut quite all the way through. There we go. And here we are. And now I'm just going to join them with my fingers. And now I'm really going to focus on that making this a nice circle. This is really kind of a, a mandala project. Because we're gonna be doing repetitive things. All right, that looks quite good. So it really turns around really easily when I have a paper under it. I suggest that, highly, highly suggest that. And now we're going to do the second coil. So I'm going to look at the, uh, the ugly place here is on the top, which, which is where I'm going to score. And I'm going to ooh, a little bit of water on there to score faster. I'm not going to score quite as well as I usually score just because I don't want you guys to have too long of a video here. So now I'm going to lay this over the first one, add a little more water, and add it. I'm looking to see if I have any high spots or low spots. This seems to be a little low spot, and this seems to be a little thicker here. So I can offset this. I can make it more, less obvious that this is not perfect as far as, you know, the, uh, the coil being the same uh, with the whole ways uh, by putting the fat parts and the skinny parts and the skinny parts and the fat parts. And again, I'm going to do that same technique where I overlap and I cut at a diagonal because that's going to give me a larger surface to connect these. And that's really, really important. A 
I want stuff to really stay together. And now I'm just pushing this together. It's very soft clay. And I'm doing that thing again where I turn it round and round to get that perfect circle. There we go. And now we're going to blend. Oops, that's right. Now I'm gonna put one more here. You could do it after or before, but I'm gonna put one more tiny, tiny little, um, little coil right here. Sorry guys, I'm really tired. This is the last couple weeks of school and I've been up late till 11.30 grading every single night. And then I can't go to bed until like, 130 and so I'm tired. So I'm gonna take this, it's a little bit dry, it's already pre-scored. I'm gonna notice how tiny it is. I just used actually to make this part of this leftover from the base, if you was if you were wondering about that. And now I'm just placing this around the bottom. Try to make it so that your clay that you use for this is really nice and soft. Um, the reason being that it makes it a lot easier to blend for you. And so that'll make it easier for you. And now we're going to blend. I'm going to wash off my hands here because they're getting very, very um, all the stuff. I don't want to mess up my, my piece here. So I want to start by taking the back of my nail here, which everyone has, even People who bite their nails, they still have the back part and I'm just going downward. So I'm really touching a lot this top coil and really smoothing down all the way around. If I mess up this top coil a little bit, I'm not concerned because at the very end, I'm gonna add one more. And it's really, really awesome when you do that, that last one to add, especially if you are, you know, if you haven't done this for, for years, because that last one is gonna hide any, well, a lot of mistakes that you might go, you know, make along the way. All right. Because sometimes, you know, you accidentally, you'll be smoothing one part and then you'll mess up another part type of thing. All right, so I first go down, down, down. Then I'm going to go from the side and I'm gonna go down again, pushing down. It's a lot easier if you do this while it's sitting on a surface like mine is. Mine is a little bit wet and so it's trying to kind of squish out. It's not really behaving well. So that's why I'm holding it with both fingers, opposite sides, and even with my left hand, it doesn't slip. If it doesn't want to, uh, to blend going down, then switch directions and go blending up. Sometimes going both directions really helps. Depending on what the clay is doing. If it's pulling up on you, then you definitely want to go both directions. All right, so now we have this surface that's pretty blended on the sides. And now we're going to blend more inside. I still have a little tiny shelf here and I wanna get rid of that. So I'm using the back of my finger again. And the reason that I wanna get rid of that is because in these ring containers, um, remember you can also use them for, um, you know, earbuds. Uh, you can use them for keys. Wonderful place to put keys so you, you know, you don't lose your keys. Just put it by the door. You can throw your keys in there all the time. Um, a lot of people use it for jewelry uh, or me mementos, you know, from like a trip, things like that. Now I'm going to use my finger and I'm going this way now around the bowl. Notice how I have my hand on the outside always supporting it. And that's super important. I also try to do a little bit at a time. 